In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus gives one of his most profound and comprehensive teachings on overcoming worry. With three simple words, do not worry. Jesus presents a case against the epidemic of worry that he is sure will attack us in this fallen world. If you've lived long enough, I'm sure that you too have experienced some form of worry. And the Bible has a lot to say about this problem. The good thing for us is that what the Bible has to say is helpful for us to overcome worry so that we can experience God's peace when everything in our lives isn't perfect and we are unsure of what tomorrow will hold. Welcome to Bible Study at Beloved Women. I'm Christina Patterson. If you are new here, please be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss any of our videos to help you learn, love, and live God's Word. And for those of you returning, welcome back. Thank you so much for watching, commenting, and sharing as it truly helps us to reach more women with the love and truth of Jesus Christ. And for even more beloved Bible studies and encouragement, I invite you to download the Beloved Women app where you can find unlimited beloved videos, Bible studies, study guides, and more. Today, we're opening our Bible studies to Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 34 to learn how to break the cycle of worry. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, Jesus starts his teaching on worry with these words. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life. He goes on to give argument after argument as to why we should not worry. We'll discuss those reasons soon enough. But there is a word in this verse that I have overlooked my entire life that makes a huge connection between the worry we experience and why we experience that worry. It's the very first word that you see in Matthew chapter 6 verse 25. Therefore. This simple word tells us that there is a reason why Jesus is telling us not to worry. And we find it in the verses before he says, therefore. We have to understand that Jesus doesn't just start randomly talking about worry for no reason. There's a connection between what he previously said in the text and this teaching on worry that we're gonna be studying in Matthew chapter six, verses 25 through 34. So what was he talking about that then led him to say, therefore, do not worry. He was talking about not being able to serve God and worldly possessions at the same time. He sums up his thoughts in verse 24 where he says, no one can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Jesus is making it clear that we have a choice to make. Either we can look to God or to the things of this world. We simply though can't do both. We have to choose. Now, what happens if we don't choose? What happens if we try to straddle the fence and serve both God and money, both God and worldly possessions? When we try to do both, worry is the result. When we have one foot in the world and one in the kingdom, we will be filled with worry and anxiety. So Jesus is telling us to be completely devoted to God because when you do, worry and anxiety will not control you. Now, I'm not talking about the normal concern we should all have in the face of danger or harm. I'm also not talking about anxiety that needs medical professional assistance. The worry that we're talking about is an over concern for the things that are out of our control. Anytime that we are battling with worry, it is a sign that we are facing the tension of trying to seek the things of this world and seek the kingdom of God at the same time. The very thing Jesus warns us we cannot do, it's not even possible, yet we try. Have you ever wondered why people that are not of God and completely against God seem to not struggle with worry and seem to be so at peace? It's because they are not divided. Now, they have chosen the wrong path, and although they may seem at peace now, the path that they are on, the Bible tells us, will lead to destruction. Yet, because they are completely settled 
on the decision they have made, they are not struggling with worry. Not because they made the right decision, but because they made a decision and they're not trying to go in two separate ways. Now, prayerfully, the Holy Spirit will convict them and lead them to the path of Jesus Christ because just because you don't have worry doesn't mean you have right relationship with God. So, how much more peace can we as Christians have when we decide to go all in with God and make His kingdom our focus? But when we don't, we will find ourselves in what I call the cycle of worry. The cycle of worry works as follows. First, we look at our life and we see or sense that there is a need or a deficit. Second, we seek to control and fill that need in our own strength apart from God. Third, either we don't achieve what we're looking for or we achieve it and are still unsatisfied. So we find ourselves back realizing our need and deficit, but this time it's greater than before. Then the cycle continues and we're left consumed by this need or deficit, always striving to fix it even if it's not in our control. This then opens the door for worry to rule, lead, and govern our lives instead of God. What you'll recognize about the cycle of worry is that God is not in it. The worry that Jesus is talking about in Matthew 6 is our striving to fix what only God can fix, heal what only God can heal, change what only God can change. This is why the cycle is never ending unless it's broken. In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus gives us a very practical framework for breaking the cycle of worry. Let's look deeper at what he teaches us so we can break the cycle of worry to live in peace. Matthew 6 verse 25 through 34 says, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. There is a healthy level of concern we should all have, a heightened sense of awareness we should maintain to protect us from danger. But this is not the type of worry that Jesus is talking about. Jesus is talking about when instead of serving the purpose to warn and protect, our over-concern rules and controls us. So Jesus tells us three things to do to overcome each stage of the cycle of worry. Look at the birds of the air, consider the lilies of the field, and seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So I wanna explore each of these directions that Jesus gives us so that we can exit this crazy cycle of worry and enter the peace and rest of God. The first point at which we usually get on the cycle of worry is when we realize something is missing or we think something is missing from our lives. Often today we'll find ourselves satisfied until we get on social media and compare our whole lives to the highlights of someone else's life and start to feel empty. Now, I also want to say there are many times where that void is very real. We've lost something. We've been deprived in a relationship that we desire. We have wounds that need healing and real needs in this world. 
So regardless if identifying our needs is through comparison or real life circumstances, we all still experience the vacuous deficit this need leaves and we desire for this void to be filled. When worry is leading our lives, it's then at this point we forget that God is the one who provides all our needs. He's the one that fills our empty spaces. And so Jesus says, look to the birds of the air. They don't sow or reap or gather, yet God feeds them. We often worry because we fear we won't be taken care of if we don't always do it ourselves. But if God will take care of a bird that's not even made in his image, how much more will he take care of you? Much of our struggle with worry is our striving for the things of this world so we can store up for ourselves, as Jesus tells us in Matthew 6, 19, because we fear running out and not having enough. But God has not given us a spirit of fear, so this motivation does not come from Him. If the birds do not store up, why should we? How do we store up? How are some ways that we store up? Well, we store up by overworking to get more money to fill our desire for provision. We don't set healthy boundaries to store up relationships, even if they are unhealthy, to fill our fear of being alone. We put up too many boundaries sometime to store up protection to fill our unhealed wounds. We people please to store up the affection of others so we can feel significant. We overshare on social media to store up fame and popularity to fill our void of acceptance. When our sense of value is in this world and not in God, we will anxiously store up for the rest of our lives. But when we realize that we are treasured by God, we don't have to strive to store up worldly treasures for ourselves to fill a void that only God can fill. I'm not saying that we don't get jobs or start businesses, have saving accounts, pursue friendships and relationships or never share on social media. I'm saying we don't place our trust in acquiring these things, but in God who is our provider. When we trust our value in God, we can stop striving and hustling knowing that we are well-kept women taken care of by our Heavenly Father. We think that our anxious striving somehow adds value to our lives. But Jesus tells us worry does not add any time to our lives. Our lives are valuable to God and our time is valuable also. And to use the time that we have here on earth to strive for the things of this world is a waste because it will never fill us like we think that it can. If we don't get to the point where we realize our value to God, we will find ourselves in the second stage of the cycle of worry where we seek the things of this world to fulfill the void that we chose not to allow God to fulfill like only He can. It's then that Jesus tells us to consider the lilies. Not only is God going to fill your empty places like He fills a bird's empty belly, he will cause you to grow and clothe you like the lilies of the field. Jesus says for us to consider how the lilies grow in beauty and splendor. God is our gardener who consistently supplies our needs as a source of life that will never run out. When we run after the things of this world, it will never be enough, which is why we will continue to have to run and seek and strive. But when we turn to the true source of life, our needs aren't only fulfilled, but we flourish, we grow, we mature. See, Jesus says to look at the birds as a visual representation of the value that God has for you and his power and desire to take care of you. But when he says consider the lilies, it requires the use of not only our eyes, but the use of our minds. We need to change our minds about where we search for our needs and what we strive for in this world. It's so interesting that we strive for money and status and popularity because what we really want is protection, acceptance, and peace. But guess what? Those things are not found in the worldly possessions that we often find ourselves striving for. Those are all things that we find 
in Jesus Christ. So when we don't seek Christ for the things that we really need, and instead we seek the things of this world, we often find ourselves in stage three of the cycle of worry, where our need and deficit grows bigger than it even was in stage one. And we start the cycle all over again, but maybe instead of seeking money this time, we seek superficial relationships. And then we seek distraction. And then we seek drugs and alcohol or sensuality and promiscuity. And the void only gets bigger because the only way to fill a God-sized hole is with God himself. So Jesus gives us the final step to get off the crazy cycle of anxiety. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Jesus already made it clear in verse 24 that we can't seek both God and money, both God and the things of this world. He makes the connection that we are worried because we're trying to do both. And now he closes the loop by saying, do not worry, but seek the kingdom. Because when we're focused on God, we don't have to worry about ourselves. When we're focused on God, we know he will take care of us. When we're focused on God, Jesus tells us all these things will be added to us. Jesus says it's the Gentiles or the non-believers who seek after these things, but not the children of God, not the people that know they are valuable to God and taken care of and provided for by God himself. When we look to the birds and consider the lilies and we know who we are as God's children, we have the freedom to seek him without worrying about the things of this world. We don't have to live divided, but we are free to live devoted to God. When my son gets home from school, he asks me almost every day, what are we going to eat for dinner? Often asking even before saying, hello, how are you? Because when my kids get home, they are super hungry. They are so hungry. But my son doesn't ask me, are you going to feed me today? He already assumes we are going to eat dinner. He's not asking out of worry, wondering if I'm going to allow him to stay hungry. He's asking out of expectation because there is not a day that goes by that I do not feed my children. There is not a day that goes by where God does not feed the birds of the air. There is not a day that goes by that God does not clothe the lilies of the field. And there is not a day that goes by that God will not take care of you. You are free from the worry of seeking the things of this world to seek the God that loves you and provides all your needs. Seeking the kingdom means seeking God's will. It's looking for what he wants and his purpose for your life. Seeking his righteousness means achieving his will and purpose in his way. Oftentimes we want to control. And even when we know God's will, we still want to do it our way. This is why Jesus says, seek the kingdom and his righteousness. We often leave out that last part about seeking his righteousness, but worry will still win if we're not in alignment with both God's will and his way because his way is the only path to truly get to his will and we know what god's path is for us because he tells us in his word psalm 119 verse 105 says your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path god's word tells us the path to take it's the instruction manual on how to seek the kingdom we don't know what the future holds but we do know that god's path is the way that we should take so jesus says don't even worry about tomorrow. Actually, he says again, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. So in light of God taking care of us because he values us and will provide our needs, we don't have to worry about the future as we seek God and his righteousness. Are there real concerns and problems awaiting us in the future? Most likely. But what's worry going to do about that but make you miserable? today. Jesus says today has enough trouble. Why take on today and tomorrow when all you have is today? But God promises to take care of you today. The birds don't store up tomorrow because God feeds them today. We don't have to worry about tomorrow because God's promise is in today. The Bible tells us that his mercies are made new each day. 
So we find God's grace and his peace today. And when tomorrow is today, his grace and peace will follow us then. So we don't have to worry about trying to control tomorrow. In fact, we were not made to control. We were made to trust God who is in control of everything. So when we come out of alignment trying to do God's job, we don't gain control, we gain worry. When we seek the things of this world, instead of seeking the kingdom of God, we don't get peace, we get more problems. When we seek our righteousness and our way of doing things and not God's, we don't gain, we lose. But when we align ourselves with God and his kingdom, as we are told to do in today's scripture and surrender to his will by trusting him, we receive the peace and fullness that our souls desired from the very beginning. So let me know, what's the next step you need to take to get off the crazy cycle of worry? I look forward to chatting with you in the comments. If you enjoyed today's video, will you do me a favor and share it with a friend because you just never know who might need some beloved encouragement today. And for more beloved encouragement, be sure to download the Beloved Women app available in the Apple and Google Play stores for unlimited videos to grow your faith, learn God's word, and encourage your soul. As always, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, be beautiful, be blessed, and be loved.